nearly 4,000 years, metals such as iron and steel have been worked and manipulated by craftsmen such as blacksmiths to create a variety of products such as tools and machinery. But only in recent years has the science behind this become clear, and it goes right down to the atomic scale. On a day-to-day -day basis, we do gates and railings, fire grates, canopies, um, agricultural machinery repairs, uh, basically anything the customer wants. Blacksmiths like Gordon use iron to produce such varieties of work, but iron can be alloyed with other elements to change its properties. Traditionally, blacksmiths have used things like tool steels, and these sort of steels are just mixtures of iron and carbon. On its own, iron is really quite soft and easy to deform, but carbon really easily diffuses into the iron and really strengthens it and makes it stiffer and stronger. Working iron or steel to make tools such as a chisel requires a series of steps in which the structure and properties are changed at each stage. Basically, when we're making a chisel, we'll get the metal hot, red, red hot, and then we'll form the chisel, and then it goes back in the fire, and we get it to a red heat, quench it in the water to harden it, and then it goes back in the forge for tempering. The first of the steps mentioned was to heat the metal to temperatures as high as 1,000 degrees Celsius. This is made possible by simply heating the iron in a burning flame, fuelled by coal or coke. So a blacksmith will heat up a piece of iron until it gets really hot, so it's glowing, maybe red or, or even yellow, which means that it's probably at about 900 or 1,000 degrees Celsius. Now, iron's got this really amazing property that it changes its crystal structure depending on how hot it is. So at low temperatures, it's what we call a body-centred cubic crystal structure, and at high temperatures, it's what we call a face-centred cubic structure. I've got a couple of models here. This is a model of a body-centred cubic structure, and you can see that there's a cube uh, set out by those eight atoms with one in the middle. And then at high temperatures, it forms this face-centred cubic structure. Um, and again, there's a cube sort of swept out by those eight atoms, and then if you look at each face, it looks like uh, the f sort of five on a dice uh, with uh, uh, an extra atom in the middle of each face. So these crystals have slightly different properties, um, which means that it's easier for the blacksmith to work it, this hot, this hot crystal structure. And also at high temperatures, things are just easier to bash around anyway. Whilst heating the iron helps hammer it into the desired structure, leaving it to cool slowly would result in a soft metal, which would go blunt immediately. It can be made harder by a process of rapid cooling. When we cool down steels really quickly, they form this really crazy complicated crystal structure. I haven't got a model of it because it's far too hard to make. And this means that the, the material is very brittle, but it's also very, very hard to bend. And so we've got some really useful properties in the, that we can't bend it, but we can't really use it for anything useful because it'll just shatter. Cutting tools like chisels need a very hard edge to cut with, as well as be flexible and tough enough to survive impacts. So the tool needs a combination of properties from the quenched and unquenched steel. So by heating the metal up to maybe about 300 degrees Celsius or so, then we can get rid of these crazy, nasty, horrible crystals and form just the, the plain, nice VCC crystals again. And this has the effect that we can get a mixture of properties between the hardness and the brittleness of the, of the nasty crystals, but also the, the ductility and the flexibility of, of these crystals. And so by tuning the length of time we heat it up for and the temperature that we heat it up to, then we can get a mixture of those two that's absolutely perfect for what we want to use it for. So in the end, all of these stages allow blacksmiths to create tools like an iron chisel, which will cut another piece of unworked iron, all by manipulating the metal's structure at the atomic level.